Welcome back to Novel Nomad and welcome to Hong Kong. These are just a few of the bookstores that I managed to find during my adventure in Hong Kong, but definitely not all of them that Hong Kong has to offer. So it's not a comprehensive list, but one that I had great fun exploring. Starting off, this was just one outside of our hostel, Swindon Book Company. Um, it was quite a fun little store. Unfortunately, we didn't take any video inside the store, but it was definitely a fun way to start a Hong Kong holiday. And of course, my video. Now, the top of my list was the independent bookstore called Kubrick. I loved this idea of this bookstore. I didn't realize what I was getting into until I arrived. It is such a beautiful, beautiful store. Very hipster vibes. It's got wooden featuring in the design. It's got a cafe. All the books are very mind focused, challenging, driven focused, and I got some absolutely brilliant titles from here. Uh, the shelves themselves are very fascinating. They had like a double shelving, so the front ones were on runners and the ones at the back you could always move around to try and see all the different books. So it was a very clever way of doing a getting as many books into a short space. What I'm doing here is they actually had tiny books made by local artists in like a gachapon. And of course I got the little wine card and I actually don't drink wine so we just thought it was a hilarious one for me to get. But um, it was just such a brilliant way, it's like a little zine, to have an extra experience within this bookstore. The level of English classics that are available here was beautiful and I definitely found a few books that I have never seen before. I was very much excited with this bookstore. Kubrick was so original, so fresh. It was just a brilliant store. Now these are the ones that absolutely piqued my interest and I may have came away with a little shopping bag. Next is Bleak House Books. Now this one is in fact my absolute favourite. Now that is a closed door. They usually don't look like that with their front door but we got there before the owner because obviously I am that keen on books. But what Bleak House Books is known for is vintage penguins, vintage 60s books, all these fantastic pulp fiction cover books and it's just such a brilliant eclectic collection i had so much fun you could browse for hours through these books and it's such a beautiful setup it's quiet it's removed it's just brilliant i absolutely adored bleak house books and i really love chatting to the owner there she was so interesting and fascinating and they had a really great collection from local authors i did have a look at a few of the titles and it was just brilliant to see such support from an independent bookstore within the community Taking you back onto Hong Kong Island, we are going to Flow Books, or Lily Books as it's also known that I discovered going to this uh, store itself. This is a second hand bookstore, kind of hidden away in this little tiny little building in Hong Kong downtown and it is absolutely crammed with books. I honestly think it my friend and I were joking that this will be what my future house looks like. Um, although I fully intend to get floor to ceiling shelving, that is the dream. But it is such a whimsical little store. The guy who worked there was so wonderful and chatty and we just talked about books for so long. And the English selection is brilliant. I think nearly the I'd probably say about 80% of the collection is English. They also contain uh, DVDs and CDs there as well. But what I really loved was checking out the mystery books. I think I was just in a Cloak and Daggers uh, Christmas frame of mind at the time and all the mysteries were grabbing my attention. But it definitely had a wide and various array of titles 
and even though they're kind of in genre you would definitely find a lot of titles mixed in with others so if you want to go through this bookstore thoroughly I'll give yourself about a really good hour to have a really good look through everything it has to offer. One of the brilliant things about Hong Kong is many of the stores I found, I didn't find online. So this, I believe, is more of a chain store over there. It sells a lot of gifts, books, and magazines, but it was still really great to see the selection and range that were available because it's such a weird blend of UK and US titles. But this one definitely came up on my searches. Lockman Rare Books is gorgeous. It's, it's what you want your future library slash bookstore to look like because it is leather bound. It is antiquitarian copies and they are very serious about their books here they're such wonderful people they know about their books so well but it is definitely on the pricey range of shopping so if you do want a particular classic book definitely check out check out their wares Hi everyone, I know this is quite a sudden change from the lovely Hong Kong scenery but I was really wondering how to finish off this video well and I thought why not do a little improv book haul at the end of it. So these are the books that I bought at Hong Kong in all those beautiful bookstores that you saw um, and I thought I'll get straight into it with the ones that I bought at Kubrick. So the first one was East of the Sun and West of the Moon, thanks to my lovely friend Chloe, who did lots of the filming in the video, but she put this in my way and I bought it immediately. It is illustrated by Kay Nielsen, who has that bit of that really gothic art deco vibe to her illustrations, but it is such a beautiful book. Just, just look at those illustrations, they're beautiful and they're all old Nordic fairy tales and folklore. So it is a stunning book to add to my collection and just a really different take on fairy tales that I just have never read before or things that have been so heavily adapted by traditional story by traditional fairy tale tellers that we know such as the Grimm's and Anderson to have this in more of a raw oral tradition within this book with such excellent gothic illustrations I definitely had to pick this one up. Now one thing at Kubrick that you might notice is they do this excellent plastic wrap on all their books and I haven't unwrapped these yet because I might, why not, they're white books and I won't unwrap them until I'm going to read them and that is uh, Flannery O'Connor's books. Now I have read her absolutely brilliant short story her absolutely brilliant short story collection and that is everything that rises must converge I also got her complete short story collection in these covers now they are just they're just beautiful whoever illustrated these are full props because they are amazing covers and it just works so well within the themes because her writing style is of such a gothic element of the south the words are stripped back to a purity but also a harsh reality it comes out of the writing itself and it makes the reader face many things and many issues within society and within the story itself so it is such brilliant writing and i just had to get into some of her longer works because while short stories are so tantalizing, it is great to see how a writer can go from a short story to a longer fiction. Now, The Violent Bear It All Away is a novel. Then you have Mystery and Manners, Occasional Prose, and also Wise Blood. So these are all brilliant, absolutely beautiful books that I just... I just had to get when I was over there. It was such perfect timing. Next, we made our way to Bleak House Books, which is probably going to be one of my favorites like Kubrick was amazing for new books Bleak House was perfect for all those wonderful cult classic covers and there were so many crime books it was just perfect for Cloak and Dagger readathon time um, but I picked up a few of those vintage pulpy covers that I just thought was so perfect I couldn't get away from the first one being Scapegoat by Daphne du Maurier it is subtitled as The Fascinating Story of a Man Who Traded Lies with Another and Gained a Chateau, a Business, a Wife and a Mistress. So I loved Daphne du Maurier's Rebecca. I think that was such a brilliantly crafted novel. 
and I've had quite a few of my Instagram and bookish friends reading her other work such as Jamaica Inn and Frenchman's Creek and they've all been loving it so I thought might as well pick up this one and it has such a brilliant just such a 60s cover is fabulous and the text is actually really good and it has that slight yellow fading to it so it's just it just suits it so well. My other Pulp Fiction book that I picked up was The Wayward Bus by John Steinbeck. Another rather risque cover must have been the thing for the 60s but um, I love John Steinbeck's Of Mice and Men. I have full plans this year to be reading Grapes of Wrath um, and I just I want to get more into his fiction. I think he is such a brilliant writer and it was just such a find and a John Steinbeck from the era that John Steinbeck was writing. Um, I really really cannot wait to read this book. Next I found my way to the lovely Flow books. I think it was also called Lily books but Flow books was such a hidey hole crammed full of books of wonderful like secondhand quality and it was a really lovely selection to go through but it was really hard to choose because I didn't want to buy too many books. Um, the first one that I picked out though was Ruth Rendell, The Fever Tree and Other Stories. I really loved A Sight for Sore Eyes and I will be reading The Vault with the lovely Kate Howe very soon. But um, I wanted to try some short stories. I think her fiction, she paints it so well over such a vast canvas. So I'd be interested to see how she copes with a short story format, how her mysteries and crimes play out in this setting. So my last bookish purchase for Hong Kong was Boxes and Saints. This is actually a graphic novel about the Boxers who was a bit of a revolutionary force in medieval China. So it was not only was it a perfect book to buy whilst in Hong Kong, but it was in absolutely gorgeous edition and it was a bit of a fight against the incoming Catholic influence into China. Um, this is a graphic novel set by Jean Luen Yang and I really want to get into it. I've been wanting to read a little bit more graphic novels. I do have quite a few and I did have such a binge on graphic novels in spring that this it just inspired me to buy more and also to get a bit more into Chinese history and unknown history. I think graphic novels has such a way of presenting history and just to make the the story even more compelling. So thank you for joining for my Hong Kong bookish adventures. Um, I didn't get to all the bookstores on my list but there were certainly some wonderful ones that I discovered. So happy reading and happy traveling and I'll see you all next time. Bye!